What is going on everyone and welcome to r slash I don't work here lady the movie If you've been around on my channel for a long time now You'll know that i've made multiple movies on r slash entitled parents which you guys have absolutely loved In fact, I think i'm right in saying that a couple of those movies now have almost a million views, which is insane Also recently you might have seen I made a movie on r slash pro revenge and that's had a really good reception from you lot as well So in today's next installment of my little movie franchise that i've got going I thought i'd bring you a new subreddit r slash i don't work here lady one of the classics of reddit one of the classics of my channel and i know you guys are going to absolutely love this video now if you've not seen one of my videos on this subreddit before before we get into the movie let me briefly explain what it's all about the following stories are all based around the premise of one person thinking that someone else works in a store when in reality they don't they're just a customer like them you know what i might actually chuck in some r slash i do work here lady stories as well which is pretty much the opposite of what i've just said but equally as fun to put it simply guys if you're a fan of my normal videos and a fan of reddit stories in general You're gonna absolutely love this one. Let's get into it. Sit back. Relax. Here we go How I got fired and refused to be rehired for a job. I didn't have I had a conference. I have to attend every six months. They called a command symposium We were a small unit by army standards, but we were spread out over the world. I enjoyed meeting with my other senior leaders during the day, but I'm an extreme introvert, so I know that I need time to recharge after a day of talking to people. I stay at the same hotel and eat at the same bar, which is a short walk from the hotel. I walk to the bar when I don't have working dinners with the other senior leaders. The bar remembers me, mainly because I watch sports and read a book while I have a few beers and eat dinner. Now this is a big bar with many tables about 20 pool tables and 10 dartboards and a huge wraparound bar outdoor patio and dance floor with a stage when they have live music they probably have 50 tvs so they've got every sport that is televised on somewhere in the bar and the food is really good with a pretty good variety for a bar during my third or fourth conference there i head over to the bar for dinner and football After I eat and have a beer, I head to the bathroom while the bartender pours me another one. Halfway to the bathroom, I get the dreaded, excuse me. You know how when you get those words, you can tell if it's, I really need some help, or I really do apologize, or you better recognize your betters, your peasants. This was the latter. I turn and see a table of six women from their mid twenties to mid thirties staring at me. They were dressed fairly well, so I assume they just got off work and hit the bar for a couple of drinks. It was not hard to see better than you in their eyes. So I reply, yes. The mob of Karens all started talking at the same time. You need to take our order. You've just been sitting at the bar. Get your face out that book. You need to do your job. You need to quit drinking on the job. You need to respect your customers. Whoa, I had a red button up untucked shirt, but no logo and jeans on. The staff wore bright red polos with a huge logo over the chest pockets and black pants. Only an idiot would mistake me for staff. And I don't make time for idiots. I say in my command military NCO voice, stop to chop off their yammering. Just about the whole bar turned to look over at me, facing the Karen Hydra. I was a bit louder here than I should have been probably. The Karens looked at me with their eyes widening. I don't work here, I said in a normal voice, and I went to the bathroom. Looking back now, I think the way I said stop escalated the whole thing, since I said it in the same manner I would to a bunch of privates, and these girls were better than me, after all. When I came out of the bathroom after washing my hands, very important this is, not for the story, but just important to wash your hands, I see the Karen Horde screeching and wildly motioning at the manager. Now, I'd actually met the manager a couple of times, and we knew each other by name when I came into town. He's a really good guy, and you can tell his staff liked him. One of the Karen sirens yells and points, that's him, and they all start squawking again. The manager waves me over, and I see the crooked smile that he is hiding from the Karen ogres. He says to me, OP, did you refuse to serve these ladies? I say, thinking ladies is a loose term for people that use their left butt cheek as a brain, yes. The Winidgo screech of the Karens begins again in earnest. The manager continues, well, they are demanding I fire you. Okay, I reply. Okay then, you are fired and you don't have to finish your shifts. I pause for a second and look at how smug the Karens are. And I figure this cool manager is cool, so why not? I continue, do I get severance pay at least? 
Sorry, no. Any workers' comp benefits? No. What about medical and dental? Not available for you. Sorry. Well, what about my final paycheck? Without missing a beat, the manager says, we'll be sending you what we owe you in the mail. Well, how about a severance beer then? I think we can work that out. I reach out my hand and shake the manager's hand and say, it's been a pleasure working with you, manager. The manager replied, I really wish we could keep you. And with that, I just went back to my spot at the bar. A couple of the people around me asked what happened and I told them and they had a good laugh. A few minutes later, the bartender brings me a beer before I finished the one I had and said, our manager said your beers are free tonight as your severance package. She laughs and the people around me that saw what happened or heard about it laugh too. I may have four beers at the most over a night if a game is on that I like, so there was no danger of me trying to drink the bar dry. They had three bartenders and I always had a fresh beer before the one I was drinking was finished and they poured my old beer out so my beer was always cold. I pace myself when I'm out and it can take me about 30 to 45 minutes to finish one pint. Now guys, that should be the end of the story. But a Karen has to be self-important and these girls would not let it go. More people have come into the bar by now and I'd almost forgotten the whole thing. About an hour after the incident, the manager comes up to me and says, you're not going to believe this. Can you come with me back to their table? I say, sure. So we go back to the table with the Karen hex bonds. I thought it might be an apology and I was gonna be like, no worries, mix ups happen but I didn't understand the nature of a flock of Karens in the wild that did not get the respect they think they're entitled to. When we get to their table, the manager starts with a straight face. They've asked me to give you your job back if you will apologize to them for your rudeness as a server. They feel sorry for you knowing that you need this job for your medical bills. I cock an eyebrow at him, but he remains in character. He gives me the same crooked smile. I told you guys, this bloke is cool. One of the minor minion Karens at the table, sorry, one of the minor minion Karens, <laughs> what an image. One of the minor minion Karens at the table says, we understand how tough it must be for someone in your position to be able to hold a job. Then a major Karen minion, <laughs> so you were sorry, we have minor Karen minions and major Karen minions. Where's Gru in all this? That's my question. A major Karen minion says, you know, because of your age and all, and you can only be a waiter with your skill set. Well, I have been in the army for almost 20 years at that time, Karen, but thank you very much. And then, ah, oh, here we go. Demon Lord Karen said, If you just apologize to us, then we can use our influence to get you your job back. After all, we see you just sitting at the bar getting drunk off your last paycheck. The manager at this point is really struggling to keep a straight face. OP, do you want to apologize and get your non-existent job back? I look at the coven of evil Karens. Yep, they missed it. Manager, I think I'm going to stick to the opportunities that I have already and not ask for my non-existent job back. Whoosh, right over their upturned noses. I understand. Before the manager could even finish his sentence, Lord Sauron Karen stands up and gets in my face. You better take that job off her back. We're putting our reputations on the line for you. You need our influence in this town if you want to make it here. I will personally make sure that you do not work in this town again if you don't take this job back, you worm. Now, I say worm since she actually used some other words that are not really that appropriate. If you can imagine Devil went down to Georgia, where a band of demons joined right in, you get the picture of how the other Karens came in behind their Karen High Priestess. I looked her in the eye and very quietly said matter-of-factly, I don't give a flying fart in a windstorm about your opinion, influence, or whatever comes out of that male rooster garage you call a mouth. So close it before I park my car in it. Yeah, a little over the top, but I was done with them. I look over Kraken Karen's shoulder and say to the manager, who is pretty wide-eyed, I'm going to refuse the job I never had. I'm shaking a little from the adrenaline, but I turn and walk back to the bar and my fresh beer. The entire bar had seen this Karen screech, but since nothing really happened outside of the Karen's piercing wail of being disrespected, they went back to whatever it was they were doing. I mean, the Karen's table was in the middle of the bar, so it was kind of like a stage for them. I calmed down quickly as I really don't care what they actually think. Besides, there's a pretty good football game going on. These Karens are still mad and say some things behind my back that I tune out. 
The manager meets me back at the bar and apologizes. He comps my whole meal and I told him that he didn't have to do that and we have a quick laugh now that it's all over. He even tells me that they still don't know I never worked here. He said that I knows I like to relax in his bar, but he would like to do one thing if I let him. I was apprehensive, but I said, okay. The manager goes up on stage and talks to the live band that is warming up. He grabs a mic and says something like this. We are proud of our military and would like to recognize one of our patrons with almost 20 years of service. Would OP please stand up? Once again, guys, I'm an introvert and don't like this, but I like the manager, so I do it. I made sure not to look at the Karen table, but everyone else around me did. Tonight, he got confused as one of the servers and I had to fire him. The entire bar starts laughing. I tried to hire him back, but he refused my job offer. More laughter. I guess he enjoys being the non-commissioned officer in charge of one of the largest medical research facilities in Texas more. More laughter. We here at my bar want to thank you for your continuing service. The bar raises glasses and I raise mine back and sit back down. The Karens leave very quickly after that, since the entire bar is giving them the stink eye. There was no doubt about who the manager was talking about, since they were literally the center of attention for a few minutes with me standing next to their table. I have to shake a bunch of hands and get offered drinks which I decline, since I do have to work the next day. Finally, the manager comes over and I asked him why he did that. I was fine and he didn't have to do that for me. Again, I like just relaxing by reading and watching the game with a beer. Well, I did it for two reasons. First of all, no one should get treated the way they treated you. The second is, do you think they're gonna put a bad review on our page now? If they try, could you see the blowback they will get? I could not fault him for that. I went back to this bar a couple more times when I had a conference in the area, but I made sure to never wear a red shirt in there ever again. And there we go, guys. That is the end of that absolute classic of a story. One of the best stories I've read out in a long time, that is for sure. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did, because that is up there for me with one of my all-time favorite stories from this subreddit. Just the ability of the manager to come out of nowhere and formulate this genius plan, acting, and, you know, getting you involved in little winks and cheeky grins here saying, you know what, let's just go along with me on this one. This is going to be some fun. We're going to get the justice for you that you deserve. And we're going to go along with what these Karens think and just make them look like absolute idiots. I mean, to be fair, they are idiots, but my God, having OP stand up and saying, OP, thank you for your 20 years of military service. After these Karens thinking he was just a lousy waiter that got drunk at the bar and couldn't hold his job and had to be fired. Wow. That is incredible. I would just love to see a picture of their faces right then and there when they realized, oh my God, we've been totally schooled. We've been bamboozled and we've been played. Let's get out of here, ladies, um, and never come back. I was just fired for the second time after quitting years ago. Long story short, in 2014, I was working at a pizza chain in a rural Utah farming town. I won't say which one, but they're a national chain known for being greasy greasy. At the beginning of July, I gave a two week notice to my manager that I'd be leaving to move out of state to be closer to family and a better job market. I finished out my time as promised, moved, found a new, better gig, and that was that. But of course, you heard the title, so you know that wasn't really all. In summer of 2015, I received a call from a new store manager. He informed me that he's been putting me on schedule, and it was unacceptable that I wasn't even coming in to look. If I didn't show up today, he'd have no choice but to fire me. I asked him, did the old manager not take me out of the system after I quit last year? He grumbled and made some snarky complaint that if I had quit a year ago, I wouldn't be in his scheduling program. I let him know that I now live in a completely different state and working a completely different job and I wouldn't be showing up for any shifts he scheduled me for. He threatened to fire me again and I reiterated, hey, I don't actually work for you, so do what you gotta do. He hung up and that was the last I heard of it. Until we fast forward to yesterday. I received a letter from the corporate office informing me that, per their records, I haven't shown up to work since July 2014 and unfortunately they were going to have to terminate me. I still almost can't stop laughing, especially since, you know, they sent the letter to the address I gave them when I quit. 
At this point, OP, honestly, why not just try and get fired from the same job as many times as you possibly can? You're on two right now. I reckon you can get to, you know, three, four, five over the next five years. Just go for it. Maybe you'll, you know, you'll get the world record and you'll go into the Guinness World Book of Records or whatever it's called. And, and it'll be funny because, you know, two, getting fired from the same job twice is, is pretty impressive. But how about five? How about ten? Because this company seems completely inept. The same person is telling you that you're fired even though you left, what, seven years ago? How stupid is this company keep going get the record and if you get over three let me know if you get to five i will run naked through the streets of london uh there you go yes do it and i'm not really sure that's in entirely legal but um i'll give it a go guys now moving on to our second post and honestly guys listen to this title went to senior center to deliver pizza left with a new mum I mean, before even getting into this stuff, like, what sort of title is that? Here we go. I'm a pizza delivery guy, and I was winding down for a much-needed early close on Mother's Day Sunday. I'm one of the only people on staff who didn't have family plans that day. My family situation is what you might call complicated, so I worked all morning while short-staffed, and I was pretty beat. It was especially emotionally hammering to deliver so many pizzas to happy families visiting or hosting their mums. I was ready to go home, get drunk, and forget about the whole stupid holiday. So, I get a late call, just a few minutes before we closed, and decided to take it, because money is money, and it was a pretty big order. Six pies. I loaded up and realized about three quarters of the way to the destination that the address was for the local senior center. They used to order all the time, tip really well, and make really sweet conversation before the pandemic. So I was psyched to see they were safe and steady enough to order pizzas again. I snuck them a side of breadsticks from a douchebag who never tips and always harasses our female drivers that I was dropping off along the way. By the time he'd call to complain, we'd be closed. Suck on that, but not on your breadsticks. Anyways, I digress. I got there and was glad to finish off what had been an overall really trashy day with a pleasant trip to the senior center and carried the food to the front desk. The receptionist offered to carry the pieces back, but she herself looked frail enough to be a senior center resident, so I said I was happy to get them where they were going. She COVID checked me and gave me a new mask. I'm not sure what was wrong with mine, but whatever, and I found my way to some event room where they'd ordered the pizzas. And it was a total gut punch. Literally, just a room full of sons and daughters visiting their mothers and having some kind of festive party. My good mood went away really quickly, and I dropped the pizzas on the table and shuffled out. But I realized that while they'd prepay for the pizzas over the phone with the credit card, they hadn't tipped. So no matter how bitter I was, I had to make in-person contact with whoever had ordered the pizzas, or I basically just wasted half an hour. I went around the room asking for Margaret, the name on the order, and eventually someone put me in front of her. Our shop doesn't have a uniform or anything, so I started to explain. Hi, uh, Margaret, right? You ordered these pizzas? And she became really frazzled. I guess she was running the event, so she cut me off and was like, Oh, good, you're here. We were starting to wonder. I don't think Bonnie has been matched with anyone yet. Wait right here. I tried to cut in and explain that I just delivered the pizzas and she must have mistaken me for someone else, but it went right over her head. She pushed an old woman over in a wheelchair and said, practically shouting, Bonnie, this young man is here just for you. Before I could try and explain my situation again, Bonnie replied, he is, is he? Well, full disclosure, son, don't get too attached, because Jesus has my heart. Margaret, the one who'd ordered the pizza, or at least the name we had on it, whispered to me, she's a real live wire, have fun. And then Margaret and my tip were in the wind. Bonnie looked up at me and goes, you like bridge? I hope you brought your checkbook and started wheeling away to a table. I followed her thinking I'd better not lose track of her until I could return her to Margaret's. I spotted a woman with an ID badge who looked like she knew what she was doing and explained that I was the pizza delivery guy, but someone had left me with this old woman in my charge. I guess my explanation though wasn't clear enough because I said something like, hey, I was actually delivering some pizzas up here. And then the girl says, you brought pizza? Oh, that's so nice. I'll make sure you're compensated. So at first I thought, great, all resolved now. But no, she gave me a wad of cash and the organizer just disappeared. 
leaving me with Bonnie and her deck of cards. I kept looking for Margaret to return this lady to, but I also did kind of enjoy making conversation with her, and I knew that no other deliveries would be coming in since we closed on my drive over. I actually did like listening to Bonnie talk about the YouTube conspiracies she wholeheartedly believed and the spat she was having with the arts and crafts chaperone and so on. She even gave me a recipe. But I was worried that she had dementia and thought I was actually a family member or that she was expecting a particular visitor and at any moment a guy would storm in and say, what are you doing with my aunt or something like that. So finally, I saw the second organizer again, the one who'd given me the cash. I figured Margaret may never return, so I shouldn't wait for her. And I pulled the organizer aside and said, look, there's been a mix up. I don't really know this woman. The organizer seemed distracted. She was doing several things at once and she very casually said, oh, there's no mix up. The pairings were totally random. You weren't expected to have much in common. You'll get to know her. Don't overthink it and receded back into the crowd while I was still saying, no, I'm just delivering pizza. At that point, I seriously considered leaving because it wasn't my fault that these people were unorganized, but Bonnie was waiting for me with this huge grin on her face to play more cards. And it didn't look like there were any real relatives coming for her. So I figured I'd stick it out for a few more games. I was eventually able to pick up in context from eavesdropping on other pairs that this was not a mother-child extravaganza. It was a volunteer event for women living at the senior home without kids or whose kids couldn't visit them. That was a huge relief because I would have felt really terrible if she was a dementia patient who thought her son had come. Especially because I was actually kind of enjoying being mothered by her, for lack of a better term. It felt really good to have someone asking what I was doing at work and saying they were proud of me for things that weren't actually a big deal. She proudly bragged to everyone we passed on our courtyard walk about the silly little employee of the week award I just won. Basically, title only, you get your photo on the wall, but everyone gets it at some point and usually more than once, but she made it feel really important. And I really secretly loved how she got outraged over minor transgressions on my behalf. Like I told her how my landlord is sticking it to me on repairs and she was like, he's quite the ripe hair in the tuna with such sincere gusto. She said she knew a guy who could tune him up for me and I don't think she was talking about repairs, but I didn't follow up. Every time I tried to extricate myself, she'd have another activity she'd want to do. Once we finished cards, she wanted to do arts and crafts. Once we did that, she wanted me to push her around the courtyard. Once we did that, she was famished from the walk, even though all she did was sit in her wheelchair and then wanted pizza. I then fed her two slices before an orderly appeared and angrily informed me she was not supposed to eat pizza. I don't know how she then ended up with a third slice, but I seriously didn't give it to her. Finally, the party was winding down and she wanted me to hang out and watch a game show with her. About 30 seconds into the show, she fell asleep. I left her a coupon, even though I guess she isn't supposed to eat pizza, and headed home. It was kind of nice to spend Mother's Day doing Mother's Day type stuff. Really nice, actually. At this point in my life and career, if you want to call it that, I can have no wholly good memories that involve pizza. But this was pretty close. So happy Mother's Day to those who celebrated, and happy Russian Victory Day to those who didn't. And there we go. What a wonderful story, guys. I mean, that's got to be up there, hasn't it? Like, How wholesome. What a lovely story. Honestly, it is true that the majority of my stories are normally about, you know, pretty disgusting or horrible people that we kind of like laugh at or just accept as just horrible. But to have stories like this once in a while is a really nice positive change. It just makes you smile, doesn't it? Because there were a lot of highs and lows in this story. From OP's perspective, the lows of having to deal with all these horrible Mother's Day celebrations that must just hit so hard. Then the highs of of, of saying oh i'm gonna end the day at the senior center where surely it's not gonna be all mother's day celebration the low of of seeing oh no it is actually a mother's day celebration to the high of meeting bonnie and then understanding that no this is just volunteers it isn't actually mothers and their children it's just a, a nice event celebrating life i guess And yeah, shout out to Bonnie, shout out to Margaret for, you know, including OP in this and and kind of, you know, getting their identity wrong, I guess. And ultimately, shout out OP for for doing, you know, going beyond the the, the duty of of what he needed to do in terms of his job. Could have just gone in there and left and and sacked it off and and said, oh, I hate Mother's Day. But to stick around for all that time with Bonnie and and make her day really special is, is, um, 
yeah, incredible thing to do. So, OP, you sound like a good man. Well done to you. Falsely accused of working with crime syndicates because I delivered them a pizza. I never mistook this job for low risk, but I never imagined it could potentially get me thrown in jail. We got a pretty sketchy delivery call at a late hour. Our front of house is constantly slammed with everyone desperate to eat at a table again now that the vaccine is out and they were in the weeds so i grabbed the phone before i could even finish our standard greeting the guy just goes yeah it's mac i'm ordering a pizza i'm not much for small talk either so i'm rolling with it like good for you mac um pick up or delivery you know just rattling off the standard questions he answered the first few but he seemed hesitant or maybe confused he argued with some other guy behind him for a sec then got back on the line and ordered like normal as though none of the preceding stuff had even happened i caught his delivery and out i went It was a standard large pizza, no toppings, no extras. They were going to pay cash. I pull up and it's a scary, run-down, sparsely populated apartment complex. Mostly broke college students in there now though, so I wasn't too concerned or anything. I get to the door and when I knock, it eases open a bit. This didn't seem like the ideal neighborhood to keep your door unlocked, but not my business. I called in, hey, pizza. There was no response, so I called out a little louder. Got your pizza out here. Then an alarmed voice from inside was like, shh, just come in. Uh, yeah, no. I get that request weirdly a lot. Like everyone from sketchy apartment bros to suburban soccer mums asking me to bring the pizza to the dinner table because they're busy. Some people even pulled this during the pandemic. But it's a long-standing company policy and a dang good one that entering the home for any reason whatsoever is a hard no. So I said back, I can't do that, but I can leave it out here if you don't want to come to the door. Just need payment first. There was a silence and some shuffling and then the door shut and locked. And the guy was like, what do you mean payment first? That's not what we agreed on. Through the closed door. I was standing there wondering if this man had ever ordered a pizza in his life because payment first is basically implied, right? But I'm not looking for any confrontations or trying to be a butthole. So I just tell him, yeah, so uh, our store policy is payment first. Then he erupts, screaming, that's not what Mario and I discussed. So then I thought that maybe he was trying to pull some kind of scam on us because nobody at our store is named Mario and I'm the one who took this order. So I know what was discussed. I decided if they weren't going to pay, I'd made a reasonable attempt to deliver and I could safely head out now. As I'm preparing to do so, another guy, looking back now, I realize he didn't even have a box, walks very confidently up to the door, pounds on it like a heavy bag and grunts, pizza's here i didn't know if this dude in the apartment had ordered two identical pizzas from different shops or if our pizza had taken long enough that he thought we weren't coming and called someone else or i had the wrong apartment or what but it was weird enough that i decided to just go especially because pizza guy number two was looking at me with a real intense stare way more malice than i'd ever be able to muster on behalf of defending the turf for our joints pies he says something like can i help you or wrong apartment or something along the lines of a cordial go the f away but i was already on my way out and i didn't really process it i went back to the shop and i told the story to the chef we laughed and guessed that what it could have been to drive this man to order two pizzas at once i didn't think about it again for several weeks Though several weeks later, I was in the shop and a couple of cops walk in. Not in uniform, but they had badges. They asked me if I'd been at such and such apartment complex on such and such day. And I was like, that was weeks ago. I've got no idea where I was. So they were all like, well, in that case, you wouldn't mind coming down to talk to us about what you do remember. But I was like, really nothing. And they said, well, that's fine. Let's talk anyways and see if there's something you might not realize is relevant that comes back to you and all that other stuff prodding me. I told them I'm working right now, but I can come later next week maybe. But they were really insistent, which should have set off some flags in hindsight. They said, well, this is a really pressing matter and we'd appreciate if you came in right now. We'll explain it to your boss so there won't be any problems. You'll really be helping us out. Them not being able to chat to me at work should have been the first red flag. 
but I knew I hadn't done anything illegal, so it didn't even cross my mind that I could be in any sort of trouble or have any reason to worry. Especially because when I got to the police precincts, everyone was extremely friendly, like I was actually doing them a favor. They didn't throw me in a cell or try to intimidate me or anything. They brought me in a nice air-conditioned conference room and gave me a comfortable chair and asked if I wanted anything to drink and really just kind of shot the stuff with me for 20 to 30 minutes. To this day, still confused about this. Well, to be fair, OP, I do know why they do this. They want you to be as comfortable as possible, think that you're not a suspect, even though in this story you're not, in their eyes you are, and then just, you know, open up in an interview and hopefully give them as much information as possible without you kind of realizing that, you know what, you're there for a reason and they really suspect that you were involved in this. I think they even offered to order food, if I remember right. I declined even the most basic offers because I was anxious to get back to my shift. Didn't need my co-workers getting any wrong ideas. I played along and made nice because they did get the okay from my boss to go as long as I needed, but in the back of my mind, I was like, didn't you say this was urgent? They're running short staffed at work just so we can trade hot takes on the college baseball world series? Eventually though, and I think they were trying to be subtle, but they definitely weren't, they shifted to asking me about what they really brought me in to talk about. They asked me about if I'd made a delivery to the apartment complex, and I'd obviously rack my brain between when the cops first arrived and then, so I told them actually I had that I wasn't sure if it was exactly the day they were quoting me, but it was around then. I figured they'd ask about the delivery, but didn't want to get ahead of their questions. I figured a brain dump of information would make me come off as guilty, plus I didn't want to accidentally tell them more than they were expecting to hear and land myself there longer. But instead of asking, like, any of the questions I expected they'd ask, they said, and how long had you known the guys you were delivering to? Kind of confused, I responded, I didn't. I could see that my answer disappointed them, but it was the truth. They collected themselves pretty quickly though. There were two detectives, the same two who'd come for me in the store, and one kept insisting on the facts as they saw them, and the other kept trying to bend things in my favor. Okay, so a classic case of good cop, bad cop is going on here, I reckon. So, the bend guy was like, okay, sure. Not like you all are best friends or anything, but you at least knew them as customers, right? I wasn't sure what knew them as customers was supposed to mean, because to me, it was synonymous with not knowing them. So I said no. Then they changed topics. They asked how long the delivery had been planned for. I told them everything had to be ordered same day, unless it was four or more pies. And I didn't remember exactly when they called, but per store policy, it wouldn't have been more than an hour before it was delivered probably sooner based on where they were relative to the store. We went back and forth like this for way longer than I was anticipating. Them asking me questions that seemed to imply I knew something. Me feeling super confused and giving them visibly disappointing answers, reminding them I knew nothing. Eventually, they seemed pretty frustrated and they basically said, look, stop lying to us, man. Cut the rubbish. Your friends rolled on you. It's done. And I'm sitting here thinking, I have friends? But of course, in all seriousness, I was shocked by the change of tone because I had no clue what they were talking about. So I told them as much. And they were both like, come on, man. You're just embarrassing yourself at this point. With one trying to reassure me that if I just told them what I knew, they could still help me. With the other saying I was too stupid to seize this last chance. Well, no reason to sit around and be spoken to like that, so I got up to leave. Before I knew what was happening, I was being Mirandized. It was like a horror movie nightmare playing out in slow motion in front of my eyes. So I stopped with my, I want you to know that I want to get back to work, but I'm going to be chill out of courtesy, demeanor, and lost my head at that point. I kept really forcefully, without coming off as erratic, or so I hoped, insisting that I didn't even know what they were talking about like I'd been saying all along. They were not having any of it. They kept saying, videotape doesn't lie, man. You want to see the tape before you lock yourself into another lie? The jury's going to eat this up. Jury? I nearly pooped myself. I don't even turn right at red lights half the time. Plus, you had video all this time you were grilling me to remember what happened and you could have just shown me a video? What the heck? Yeah, no, to be fair, from what I know briefly about, you know, police work, that again is a very common thing to do. 
that evidence is then much stronger than if you were to just show the video of what was happening. Because, you know, if you actually just showed the suspect the video, they could make something up. For example, in your situation, they could say, which is the truth, but that's not important. I was actually delivering a pizza. Whereas if they were to ask you at first what was going on before showing you the tape, if you were to say one thing that didn't really align with what the tape was showing or just made complete, you know, no sense at all, then they'd have caught you out and they'd have got you right there. But anyway, I knew I was in over my head at that point. A million thoughts were swirling around and I was so overwhelmed and scared. I finally said what I should have said way back at the beginning, though I didn't say it nearly assertively enough because I was trying to, you know, act innocent, not seem guilty, not make things worse than they'd somehow already become. So I said, should I be talking to a lawyer? And they said, do you want to talk to a lawyer? Did you do something that would necessitate the aid of an attorney? And the other guy's like, if you want a lawyer, we'll get you one. But I have to say, that does not look good on you. And I shouldn't have believed him. As my dad has now drilled into my brain, you never talk to police. Only your lawyer does. But at the time, I thought, you know what? I guess asking for a lawyer does make it seem like I did it. Oh, snap. Then they showed me enhanced frames of the video and timestamps, and they're saying all this stuff. Like, it was really a blur at that point. But one particular thing stood out. They said something that they'd already said a time or two before, but it hadn't totally sunken in until then. They alleged, Your buddies thought this would be some quick money. They thought it would be real slick to order a pizza instead of just calling and saying, bring the stuff up. At this point, it had been established that they thought I transported some large sum of ill-gotten cash into this apartment and that we wouldn't be suspicious or wouldn't follow up. Look, I know you're a good guy. You didn't know what you were getting yourself into, but if you're not honest with us, we can't help you. I had told them repeatedly about the other guy who showed up to supposedly deliver a pizza. I even pointed him out on the footage. Unfortunately, though, the cameras didn't have audio, so they couldn't hear me arguing with the people in the apartment over the measly few bucks, or more importantly, hear this other guy say pizza. Because the other guy didn't have a pizza box, and I did, they didn't believe me that I wasn't the pizza part of this operation. To recap, Apparently, what they'd uncovered from the real criminals is that they were meant to take receipts of some money. The guys inside the apartment were told something like, that afternoon you'll get a pizza, to try and prevent anyone from saying anything incriminating on paper. But these dumb idiots in the apartments didn't understand the instructions and actually ordered a real pizza instead of just waiting for their cash delivery to show up. I'm pretty certain all that arguing I'd heard on the phone was one of the other criminals asking something to the effect of, are you sure you're supposed to order an actual pizza? Because what else would they have been arguing about right then? Uh, yeah, you can tell these guys are absolute idiots. Um, pretty standard, but wow. So once I connected all the dots, it was a matter of proving my pizza delivery was legitimate. They tried to get a record of the delivery when they talked to my boss, but we're a small shop. We only keep tickets through the end of the week and we just sign a piece of paper confirming our tip amounts every night. Unfortunately, these guys wouldn't have factored in since they didn't end up paying. Now, I didn't have anyone but the criminals to corroborate my story and there was nothing in it for them to exonerate me or they would have done it by now. But then I remembered the chef. I told him all about this delivery. I begged the cops to talk to him and reminded them I'd followed them right out of the store before I'd known what this was about so they could trust he was totally untainted. Sure enough, he recounted it exactly as I told him and told the police. The stories matched near identically. The cops went through our phone logs, but these guys had called in their order from a burner, so that was of no help. I figured the chef would be enough, but after I'd been in the precinct for nearly eight hours total, they said they were going to go ahead and hold me until they could verify I didn't go with the decoy pizza and somehow give them money another way, or until they found the real delivery guy. They never would, because they didn't believe me that he was the other guy outside of the apartments, on the video without a box. I don't know if he had the cash taped to him or what, but the cops were convinced it couldn't be him because he didn't have any bag, box, or something to hold the money. Finally, realizing that this was not a misunderstanding that was going to go away, all these years of watching Law and Order kicked in, and I asked for my phone call. I got my dad on the line, and he of course said, don't say another word. 
and showed up with an attorney who had me out within an hour of his arrival. I was formally cleared of all involvement the next day and I barely got an apology. None of this will show up on my record or anything, but still, you'd think they'd be a little more remorseful about what they'd put me through. My boss gave me a couple of paid days off, having seen how serious it all was, with questioning the chef and searching the phone logs and everything. I think he was just glad that I wasn't an embezzler or serial murderer or otherwise a criminal, because for the longest time, all they would tell him is I was involved in a situation and they needed information. So yeah, tread lightly guys. Don't be like me and make this your whole career. Or do if your only alternative is to be a cash mule for a crime syndicate. I'm super happy to not have worked there. You know what, honestly, I think the end of that story is the most important part and most interesting part of all. And it reminds me of a, a show I watched on Netflix, which was, you know, kind of in the same similar vein to people that get accused of things like OP did in this story that are very serious and, and sometimes even more serious than this. And then eventually when they're acquitted, there's no remorse. There's no aftercare. The police literally just say like, oh yeah, okay, we've been interrogating you for eight hours in this situation. It could be days, could be weeks, could be months could be put in jail but we're not going to show any remorse we just got it wrong but we're not even going to admit that you're free to go now like that's tough isn't it the show is called criminal guys and if you haven't seen it check it out on netflix i would highly recommend it this one episode in particular is very similar to this story one guy gets accused of r wording i can't use the actual word because you know youtube will hate me r wording a young girl and the whole point of the episode is showing the horrible interrogation process where he is shown picture of this girl i think she actually gets murdered eventually not by him the whole point is that he is actually in the end shown to be innocent but that doesn't matter as the episode progresses and the interrogations get more and more intense and you literally have you know the detective saying to him i know you did this i know you are worded and murdered a girl like imagine being that guy you know you haven't done it and eventually you know it comes out that he hasn't done it and he's he you know he's just been wrongly arrested and interrogated for no reason like op you know not involved in that situation but such a serious accusation and exactly like this this is why i'm raising this point exactly like what happened to op the police in the show they don't care they're just like oh yeah okay we got it wrong but who cares you can go now that's it. I think in this episode, the story actually makes the news that he's been arrested. So, you know, all his family, all his friends think that he's been arrested for, you know, R wording. And you see it all the time in society as well. Cristiano Ronaldo, he was accused of R wording. Um, anyone, you know, accused of pedophilia, that sort of stuff. If it isn't true, how, you're screwed still. Your career is still ruined. You as a person, you're probably just in absolute shock. You've been accused of this horrible thing that you never did. There's nothing you can really do and there's definitely nothing the police do to ever help you in terms of aftercare or, you know, making sure that everyone does know that, no, it wasn't you who did this. It can leave some, like, lasting impact on people like OP who had nothing to do with this and the police were just like, you know what? Yeah, we were wrong, but I don't care. Go away. Yeah, I get a staff discount. I'm staff. So, this was last week. I'm at work, it's a Sunday. I'm at the end of my shift. I'm tired and I want to go home. I've just clocked out and I'm at the till with some fish treatment for a mate and some frozen food for my snake. As usual, the cashier gives me my staff discounts. We make conversation, but as there's someone else that wants to pay, I start to leave. That's when I hear this. The lady behind me says to the cashier, I want a discount. The cashier replies, I can't just give you a discount, I'm afraid. I turn around at this point because I know the cashier is terrible with confrontation. Even me with my anxiety is better at arguing, and I have a feeling a manager may be needed, so it's best I stick around. Why not? She got one! The lady is pointing at me. The cashier calmly explains that I work here, so I'm entitled to a staff discount. She doesn't work here! I'm in here all the time and I've never seen her before! I go over to her and unzip my jacket so she can see my work polo underneath. The company name is clearly on it and I have my work keys on my lanyard around my neck with the company logo on them. I say, no, the cash is right. I do work here. No, you don't. She throws a dirty look in the cashier's direction. You two are friends, aren't you? He's giving you stuff cheaper because you're friends. I'll have you fired for this. I deserve a discount. The cashier looks on the verge of tears. You can either pay for your items and leave with them or leave without them. It's your call, I say. I deserve a discount. 
I end up going to get the manager from upstairs. And between us, the cashier, and two more staff members, we manage to get this woman to just pay for her stuff, full price, and go. I go home, get my rats in the freezer before they defrost, all is well. But that's not the end of it. The same lady came back in today while I was on tills. She comes straight up to my till with a bunch of items and declares she usually gets a discount. I recognize her and I've seen this scam before, though never from someone as brazen as this. Oh, really? I've never seen you in here before. The lady points to a colleague. This colleague happens to be one of the ones who witnessed the ordeal last week. Ask him. He knows who I am. My colleague said, oh yeah, she's the woman last week that demanded we give her a discount because she didn't believe that you worked here. The woman looks mad. If this were a cartoon, there'd be smoke coming out of her ears. Ah, I say, well, that'll be this price. I don't remember the exact amounts. It was pretty decent though. I believe she was buying a tank and set up, so well over 500 pounds probably. And my discount? I can't give you one, I'm afraid. Oh, you're new. I always get a discount. I've been here over two years, actually. Well, I've never seen you before. Really? Because that's what you said last week. Again, that'll be the price. The lady huffs and throws an air stone at me. I'm not sure if it was on purpose, but it hit me in the face. It's gonna bruise. I'm more annoyed that my colleague and I ended up having to reshelve all the stuff she left on my desk. Fish tanks are heavy. Oh, and the best parts? The same colleague sent me a screenshot of a Google review this afternoon. That very woman had left a review saying we ruined my son's birthday because we wouldn't serve me. She called us rude and all the usual rubbish. My manager replied and chewed her out with the truth. What a lad. Uh, yeah, and that is it for the r slash I do work Kennedy story. I really do not understand what this woman was trying to achieve here at all. Did she just not remember who you were? I guess she had no idea. But why would you try and use the same tactic that you thought someone else used on you the week prior, which didn't work at the time? Uh, I mean, maybe she thought it did work. I'm really bemused by this. I mean, like this would never, ever work because surely when you say to the colleague or the, you know, the worker, oh no, this guy over here knows who I am. He gave me a discount last week. And then they just say, no, I didn't. Then the whole ruse is up. I don't really understand it. What was she trying to achieve? I have no idea. But um, I'm glad that, you know, she didn't get a discount. Although I'm not really sure how she ever would have done. Oh, and by the way, anyone that's kind of like questioning why OP is putting rats in the freezer. That's what you do when you have a snake. Trust me, I'd know. You got to, uh, yeah, you put them in the freezer and then you defrost them when you feed them to the snake. It's, it's pretty simple, but um, yeah, most people don't actually know that pretty cool stuff though all right now moving on to our next post this one is from r slash i don't work here lady park in employee parking versus i'm not an employee i'm not sure if this is the right sub but it sort of fits i've been reading posts and it reminded me of this hope you enjoy i'm female and was 24 at the time by the way this happened over the course of a few weeks about two years ago i was working as a construction slash design engineer for hospitals plumbing and air conditioning I work for a company that's hired by the hospital, not for the hospital itself. My company had been hired to do an ER renovation on an old hospital, and the plans for the existing building were really old, all damaged, and just didn't exist anymore, really. As low man on the totem pole, I got the fun job of going out to the hospital to document or investigate the existing buildings, which meant lots of going up on ladders and looking above the ceiling to trap down pipes and ducts and such. Because this was an ER, and therefore 24 hours a day, we had to time our investigation for non-busy times, namely 3am to 7am in the middle of the week. I was also working my normal office hours, because my job offered overtime or in lieu hours, and I needed the overtime pay, college loans, you know. So for all these interactions, I was exhausted and just didn't really give a dang. So, on to the story. I had to park in the hospital parking garage on the top floor to be out of the way of patients and visitors. I had finished early because an emergency had come into the ER and I had to get out of the way. I had some extra time, so I decided to close my eyes for a bit before driving to the office when I was woken up by a tapping on my window. A man was peering in the window. We will call him parking dude. I waved at him thinking he was just making sure I was all right. I was sleeping in a hospital parking lot after all. 
The dude gestured for me to roll down my window, so I cracked it to hear him better. He gruffly declared that employees are to park in the back lot or on the street if that's full. Next time I'll have you towed. He then turned and marched back to his golf carts, which he blocked me in with as I called out, I don't work here. He left, I left, and went to work thinking it was a one-time deal. Little did I know. Over the next few visits, I came back to my car to find increasingly angry parking tickets about parking and employee parking from now on. They were printed on A4 and very obviously homemade with the blurry hospital logo and word art parking enforcement across the top. The notes threatened booting, towing, and demands for my supervisor's name so I could be reported. I wish I still had them to share with you. My coworkers and I had quite a laugh over them. I even left a note on my dash saying I wasn't an employee and the next ticket had a rant about lying and that you will be written up for lying once I get your supervisor's name. Then one morning, I came out to find the parking dude waiting for me. He had blocked my car with his golf cart again and was grinning at me like a cat who got the cream. I walked up to him and he said, employees have to park in the back lot. You are in so much trouble. I demand to speak to your manager. Yes, he really said it. Give me their name and number and the department you work for. I won't let you leave until you give me your manager's name. He did have my car blocked in. I tried to explain that I wasn't an employee. I pointed out my outfits, work boots, jeans, safety glasses, and a tool belt with flashlights, tape measures, lasers, and a clipboard with my drawn plans, and told him that this is where hospital admin had told us to park. But he insisted that my disguise wasn't going to trick him and demanded to speak to my manager. I was so exhausted and wasn't really up to arguing, so I just pulled out my business card and my boss's card and handed them over. I told my boss about this and he just told me to ignore it, as of course he confirmed with the hospital that's where I was supposed to park. This dude pulled out his phone and called my boss and reported me. My boss, an older gentleman, who was also the president of the company, later told me he had told the dude that he had to let me leave or he was calling the police. When the dude hung up, he told me, I'm letting you leave this time, but next time you park here, I'll boot your car and find your real manager's number and report you. Some trick with your friend won't work. He got in his golf car and zoomed away. Luckily, my boss found this whole thing hilarious. It was about a week before I went back. Bad weather meant I was busy and the ER had no work for me. And I was almost done with my task. I will be back after construction started, but it's all on hold now because of COVID. I'd finished for the day once again and headed out to my car to find the dude had sort of done what he had threatened. There was a thick chain looped through the handle of my driver's side rear door and a cinder block all tied together with a large padlock. I knew this guy was a bit nutty, but I also had figured out he didn't have any real authority. So to find this half clever, half poorly thought out ball and chain attached to my car was a bit of a surprise. Now, I got into engineering because I like solving problems. I actually don't really like math, even if I'm not half bad at it. And this wasn't a particularly complex problem. I simply rolled my back window down and lifted the cinder block and excess chain into my car and then drove away. I passed the parking dude on my way out. To say he was shocked was an understatement and I gave him a jaunty wave as I drove by. It was a cold drive back to my office with the window open, but it was worth it for the look on his face. When I got to the office, I had to go in and sign out the bolt cutters and was followed out by a parade of my co-workers to see it for themselves. I had to go back one more time. I was eager to see what the parking dude might do after his last plan failed. I came out to find he had tried the chain and cinder block bit again. This time, he had wrapped the chain around the bottom of the wheel a few times and had the cinder block tied pretty close to the wheel and the chain through the handle again. It was definitely chains in a way that would take a lot more ingenuity to get out of. Or a pair of bolt cutters I hadn't returned to the office. You know, just in case. I cut through the chain, unchained the car, and then loaded the whole lot into my trunk. The dude must have been harassing some other person because he only pulled up as I was backing out of the spot. He blocked my car again with his cart and jumped out. 
He came up to my window and I did roll it down just to see what he had to say. Hey, hey, where are the chains? How did you get loose? This is stealing. Is it stealing to take stuff he attached to my car? I will have your job for this. I never did hear the rest of the rant as I yelled magic and I'm not an employee during a pause of breath and drove around his cart and away. It was the most dramatic exit of my life and will probably never be topped. It was my last day there for now and I've since gotten a new car, so I'm not sure if I'll run into the parking dude again. I'd like to think he is still puzzled over how I managed to unchain my car. My boss did lodge a complaint, but I don't think anything came of it. Anyway, that's my I don't work here story. Hope it was worth the read. Yeah, dude, that is definitely the right subreddit. I mean, that's just amazing. It's so cool because clearly he is trying to be, you know, clever and clamp your car in various different ways. But you as like a trained professional engineer, you're obviously going to know better ways than him to deal with this sort of stuff. It's, it's, it's awesome that like it started off as you being annoyed with what he was doing. And then you were like, you know what? I'm going to accept this challenge. Everything you've got for me, parking dude, throw it, throw it all at me. And I guarantee that I'll be able to break out of whatever you, you, you trap my car in or stuff like that. It was pretty cool to see the little game that unfolded between you two. I loved it personally. I'd like to see it televised and put on national TV as a game show. Get out of this parking lot. It will be cool. Doesn't sound that appealing, does it? No, it doesn't. But you never know. It could work. Um, any TV stations that want to air that show? Um lady called the police because i was wearing a hoodie i work at a somewhat large gas station while we're given one jacket with the store logo on it there are eight cashiers and even if covid wasn't a thing that's just not sanitary our normal uniform is a pair of black pants and a bright polo with the store logo so it was pretty cold yesterday and i was wearing my hoodie because the store is built very cheap and isn't insulated the ceiling is just bare metal I was sitting in the chair for a couple of minutes by the eating area because it was pretty slow when I saw a car pull in. So I went back behind the counter. Here comes the delusional lady. She walked up to my counter and asked, Um, excuse me, where is the cashier? You're looking at him. What can I do for you? I come here every morning and I've never seen you. You don't even have the uniform. Now, the reason that's relevant is because I always work late evenings, so I've never seen this lady in my life. I probably haven't been awake before 2 p.m. in a year. Uh, tell me about it. Oh, sorry about that. It's just cold in here and the heat doesn't really work. So I took off my hoodie to prove to this lady that I did in fact work here. She then pulled out her phone as two other customers walked in and a line formed behind her. The lady says, This guy doesn't work here. I think he's stealing. I'm calling the police. So she walked off to the seating area and dialed for the police. Meanwhile, I guess the other two people realized she was an idiot and let me ring them up. She watched the entire time, telling the police I was pocketing money. When they arrived, we ended up having to call my manager to the store to explain that I did, in fact, work there. They let her off with a warning and banned her from the store. The police wouldn't let the store stay open for the entire hour it took the manager to get there. I was never detained as it was obvious I worked there, but they insisted on talking to the manager. And did I mention, I'm the assistant manager. Ugh. Yeah, a few issues I've got with this woman. Um, number one, why would you care what this store employee is working? I mean, if they're wearing a hoodie and it's a cold day, is that really impacting you at all? It wouldn't matter to me, but for some reason it matters to this lady. Fair enough. And two, did she really think that someone robbing the store would then would then act as if they were actually an employee serving customers and serving her rather than just running out the store? Who would do that? I mean, you have to be a very... I'm uh, not smart, but idiotic robber, to be honest. If you thought that, you know, doing that would actually make you get away with the crime you're committing. Surely every robber in that situation is getting money from behind the till and getting out of there before the police are actually called. They're not going to stay and feign that they work at the store. No one's going to believe that. And also, as soon as the manager comes downstairs or the other person working there who they robbed, they're going to be like, well, you don't work here. I'm calling the police. Makes no sense to me. Now, moving on to our next story. This name tag isn't just a cute accessory. So this happened about two to three years ago, but I've just now remembered it. For some context, I work at the infamous Bullseyes Mart. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the uniform there. Khaki pants, red shirt of some kind, name tag, closed toe shoes, you get the idea. I'm lucky that the Mart I work at is pretty chill on uniform. 
As long as the outer layer is 90% of some shade of red and the pants aren't ripped to high heaven and everything is work appropriate, we can wear whatever we want, including jeans. Incidents. So, it's a warm summer day at work and I'm wearing my coolest work appropriate attire. The lightest pair of jeans I have, sneakers and a red and white striped t-shirt and a name tag displaying my name and the store's logo on it since i'm working self-checkout that day i'm also outfitted with the right equipment namely a walkie-talkie a small portable scanner and keys that jingle with every step i take note the keys are the only thing slightly hard to spot just by looking at me the walkie and scanner are pretty bulky so for the last five minutes i've been running every which way helping the small crowd that descended upon the self-scan lanes so it might appear to the unobservant that i'm some clueless customer trying to find a certain candy bar on lane or something finally the line calms down enough and no one needs my immediate attention so i walk over and stand next to the woman waiting in line for the self-scan I exhale and enjoy my brief moment of peace when the woman, the Karen of the story, gives a surprised, wow. Me, thinking she was talking about the long line we just had, said, nice summer days bring in a big crowd, huh? But she replied, I can't believe you just cut me. I was confused. I, I didn't cut you. Yes, you did. I watched you walk over, grab a candy bar, and then stand in front of me. You cut me in line. I just stood there, confused. No candy bar in hand. Then it clicked. Mom, I work here. She kind of scoffed. <laughs> yeah, likely story. I looked down at my bulky walkie and scanner and my name tag and say, very likely. Karen rolled her eyes and walked away, muttering something about how rude some people can be. She then proceeded to get into the only other open lane, which had three people ahead of her. One looking like a fairly large order. I kind of shrug and share a people will be people look with the next guy in line. But it's not over yet. About 15 minutes later, the cashier, I'll call her Alia, waved me down. So I walked up to her side of the lane while still keeping an eye on the self-scan. What's up, Alia? The machine won't take this lady's coupon. I glance over and Karen and I lock eyes. She scoffs and rolls her eyes. I ignore her and glance at the coupon Alia's holding. Oh, here's the problem. The coupon's expired. Just by a day, though. I hand the coupon back to Alia. We can still honor it. Just enter the price change manually and put the coupon with the others. I don't know how to do that. Karen groans. Ah, then call someone over to show you how to do it and stop wasting my time. I can show you, I say. Really? Then Karen says at the same time as Alia, You, you can? can? Yeah, it's pretty simple. So I show Alia how to enter a coupon manually and what to do with it afterwards. She thanks me and I'm about to head back to my post when Karen looks at me, absolutely flabbergasted. Wait, so you do work here? I'm still slightly confused. I have for a couple years now. Why do you ask? You do work here and that's not a Halloween costume. I just kind of stare at the woman and Alia later told me I looked exactly like that one meme where the math is floating around a woman's head. Then I told the Karen, why would I be wearing a Halloween costume in the middle of July? Yeah, I I'm not really sure what sort of Halloween costume the woman thought you were wearing in this situation. I mean, light jeans and a red and white striped t-shirt. Nothing really springs to mind. And also, yeah, it's the middle of July. It's honestly, the lengths that people go to to try and excuse themselves from just getting things wrong. How could you be more wrong than saying, I thought you were wearing a Halloween costume when the dude's wearing normal work clothes and it's in July? <laughs> no one's believing that, Karen. Trust me, you're not fooling me on that one. I know that you were just chatting out of your bum. Let me just keep it at that. I don't know, maybe she just went to such a length in her own mind that you could not in any world be an employee of this store that she had to somehow think of a weird story that would make her mind sit at rest and just accept that, oh wait, this person's dressing up for Halloween. Maybe that's the, the, the logic that this Karen went to in her own mind, but makes no sense to me as per usual. Now moving on to our last post. I need to know who you are before I let you in. This happened about an hour ago. The place I work at is a factory composed of several different buildings. This morning, the outside air temperature was the coldest in the continental US, so everyone is bundled up a lot. We're also wearing COVID masks while indoors. I bundled up and walked up the hill to our maintenance building, where I plan to get some short lengths of wire for an upcoming project. 
I'm waiting at the tool crib counter, but the person in charge is nowhere to be found. I go off to run a few other errands and come back 10 minutes later to find nothing has changed and the overseer is still MIA. This is pretty typical as 95% of the people who need stuff in the tool crib already have an access key. The rest of us almost never set foot in the maintenance building anyway. After another five minutes of waiting, I see one of the maintenance guys I know. We'll call him Blaine. I've talked to him a lot when he covers shifts in the guard shack. He even told me his strategy for success once. It turns out you are supposed to work your way to the bottom of the ladder, so nobody notices you and you'll never be on some middle manager's chopping block. Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree with that. I asked Blaine if he can help me out. He asks what I need and what I'm going to do with it. I tell him and he gets a weird look on his face. He says, first of all, who are you? Now, it dawns on me that I'm still completely bundled up and wearing a face mask with only my eyes left visible. On top of that, he assumed I was a worker in the factory and everything I just told him would be shady as F if I was. I would have absolutely no business working anywhere near this building, let alone performing electrical work. I pull down my mask to let him see my face and tell him my name and department. We laugh and he takes me to the rolls of wire where I proceed to plunder all four pieces I wanted. And there we go. A nice little positive story to end on. You know what? Not all the content on my channel is wholly negative. You know, we do have some nice stories like this where it's just a simple miscommunication and the people work it out and they can all go on with their day, help each other out. And it's a story to tell to the grandkids. It was a funny one. I enjoyed it. No one got hurt and no one was annoying. So that has made me feel very happy. To be honest, though, whilst reading through that story, I was just thinking to myself, I cannot wait for a world in which we don't have to wear a mask all the time because oh, it's so annoying. Not only does it lead to situations like this, but it's just annoying in general for everyone, isn't it? Look, I totally get why we're wearing masks and obviously saving lives is extremely important. But when this virus finally goes away and I don't have to put a mask on when I go outside, I'll be pretty happy. That's for sure. Yelled at by customer at work. This happened to me in March of this year. Just as the lockdown started and many stores had started having special shopping hours for elderly and high-risk customers. I worked at a grocery store on the overnight stock crew and my shift ended at the same time the special hours started. I would frequently pick up items I needed at the end of my shift before heading home. On this particular morning, we had finally gotten a shipment of toilet paper and cleaning wipes in. I picked up a 12 pack of the cheapest toilet paper in the store and a canister of Clorox wipes for my mum, who is high risk. I was not wearing my black work polo because I was seven months pregnant and it didn't fit. So I was allowed to wear a plain black t-shirt instead. I picked up a few food items and headed for the register. I ended up in line behind an older woman. She said very pointedly to the cashier, who is a friend of mine, that we needed to be more strict on the elderly and high risk guidelines. She looked straight at me as she said it. She said we needed to have a guard at the door to make sure that no one was coming in during the special hours, except those that actually needed to shop at those times. At our store, it was from 7am to 8am every day. She also said that if the store lets other people into shop, they should make sure that they don't buy the essentials that other people need, looking at the toilet paper and Clorox wipes in my hands. Now, my coworker is an elderly woman and she is not shy. She's a spitfire and she'll tell you what she thinks and doesn't give two dangs about what you think. She looks straight at the woman and says, there is a limit on essential items. You can't buy two packs of toilet paper. The customer had two of the biggest packs of toilet paper we sold. We're talking 18 rolls. The woman snapped at her with a, fine, whatever, but I'm not coming in here if you're gonna keep letting other people in during the special hours. I wanna speak to a manager. Bet you guys didn't see that one coming. My coworker calls the manager on duty, which happens to be my manager on the overnight crew. He comes up and this woman goes off yelling about how we're letting regular people shop during the special hours, how the cashier was rude and was limiting her, etc. Full on Karen. My manager looks at me and can see that I'm irritated. He looked at the customer and straight up said, I would like for you to leave. She got angry and asked why she should be the one to leave when she was clearly following the rules of the shopping hours and I was not. He said, and I'll never forget this for the rest of my life, this customer you are harassing is my best employee she just finished working a nine hour shift to fill these shelves so that you could come in to buy your essentials she is picking up a few items after her shift 
And on top of that, you're harassing a pregnant woman who is considered high risk and she has as much of a right to shop during these hours as you do. She is exhausted and she's scared because of the pandemic, but she comes in every night, works extra hours and busts her butt so people like you can come in and talk down to her. You can leave now and you're welcome to stay out. And he walked away. She tried to stammer an apology at me and ask about my baby, when I was due, what I was having, etc. When the loss prevention guy showed up to escort her out. I ignored her and picked up one of her packs of toilet paper instead of the 12 pack I had grabbed. I checked out my items and was on my way while the loss prevention guy took her picture and made notes that she was banned from the store for 30 days for harassing an employee. Yeah, I guess the moral of this story, guys, is that you, you never really know if someone is high risk or not. Just because they're not old or just because, you know, they're not pregnant. Maybe she didn't know you were pregnant, whatever. It doesn't mean that someone's not high risk. Or maybe, as you said, OP, you were buying for someone who is high risk. Your mum, you know, who's elderly. So, yeah, I guess just don't presume until you really know is, is the moral of this story. But um, I kind of get a little bit what this woman was saying. Obviously, this Karen did not go about it in the right way. She should have been way more polite than just going mental at you and, and the staff. But I get what she was saying and that it is important to respect these special hours so that elderly people, people who are high risk, get the stuff that they do need and deserve. It was just unfortunate for her that OP, you'd been working all night stocking the shelves and you were just on your way out. And yeah, she happened to uh, to get annoyed at you. But um, yeah, I kind of see what she was saying. Do you know what I mean, guys? I'm being a little bit, you know, lenient with this woman, but I kind of understand where she was coming from. She's probably tired as well. She's probably scared of going out in the pandemic. But yeah, no need to be overly aggressive in this one is my overall point, I think. Now moving on to our second story. She does work here, lady. She just doesn't get paid. While this is not the typical retail horror story, I thought you might enjoy it here anyway. I'm a retired veteran and have been for more than 20 years, making this story just about three decades old. Use your disclaimers for the passage of time and my failing memory, but I'll do my best. Thank you. I'm in civilian government service these days, but back then I was a technical sergeant in the healthcare administration field. I've been assigned to the base hospital's outpatient records office as the non-commissioned officer in charge, not long before these events transpired, and we were short-staffed due to operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, so we were busy. This was long before the days of electronic medical records. These were good, old-fashioned, coloured folders, chock full of all your appointment notes and test results, all filed on shelves, lots and lots of shelves. What with active duty personnel, their family members, and local retirees and their spouses, there are about 44,000 of them. If you scheduled an appointment more than 24 to 48 hours in advance, we will pull your record the night before and send it to your provider's clinic. Otherwise, you had to come see us yourself to sign out your record before you could be seen. It was a weekday, early to mid-morning, I think, and we had a long, long line of patients at our service window. I was on duty along with two to three junior enlisted workers and RL, a very nice lady. We were dodging each other in the narrow aisles and pulling records as quickly as we could. It wasn't quick enough for IK though, impatient Karen, who RL, the records lady, was helping. I was near the window checking a patient's eligibility when the impatient Karen sighed like the air brakes on a bus pulling up to the curb. A moment later, she starts whining. What is taking so long? Then, this is stupid. I can't believe this. And what's wrong with her? Waiting in line is rarely fun and is much less so when you or your children are sick. So I get it. I stepped up and I told the Karen I'd check on her record and be right with her. I found the records lady in the aisle looking at the shelves with confused frustration and I understood the delay. Now my colleague, the records lady, had suffered a traumatic brain injury some years before and while she didn't have any major deficits or disabilities, she occasionally had trouble processing numbers. Our records were organized using a terminal digit system based on the first two digits of the last four digits of the service member's social security number. This could be challenge enough for the lady if she was in a rush. Being under the pressure of a foul-tempered Karen did not help. I suggested she take a break in the back, found the record, and took it to the service window. Here you go, mom. I'm sorry about the wait. Finally, you need to get rid of that woman. I can't believe she actually gets paid to work here. Each exclamation point by the way there was accompanied by an increase in not just volume, but also venom. I should complain to your commander. 
I wondered how in the heck this woman could not see and understand the difference between my colleague record lady's uniform and mine. I was wearing BDU's, battle dress uniform, and she was wearing street clothes with an apron. Mine was woodland camo and her apron was white with some red trim, maybe pink too, and a conspicuous red cross smack dab in the middle of it, as in the American Red Cross. So I hand the impatient Karen her record and say, I understand your frustration and again, I'm sorry for the wait. But while she, the records lady, does work here, she's a Red Cross volunteer. She doesn't get paid for helping you. Not one dime. However, I'll forward your concerns to my commander and I'll send a copy to your husband's commander as well as a professional courtesy, of course. She went pale, realizing that she may have just gotten her husband into trouble. She drank her big steaming cup of STFU and walked the walk of shame to her appointment without another word. Just as I promised, I wrote up the incident for my commander, who actually contacted the impatient Karen's husband, clued in my first sergeant, and CC'd the hospital patient advocates, just in case. I never heard anything further. Not long after that, I worked with the Red Cross coordinator to find the records lady another volunteer position, one where she wouldn't be subjected to that kind of treatment, something that also better suited her talents. She really was a nice, generous lady, and I didn't want to see her volunteer efforts wasted thanks to some self-centered Karen's abusiveness. Oh man, I feel so bad with stories like this, you know, because yes, this person technically is an employee, but you know, they're not getting any money. They're volunteering their time just for you to come in, Karen, and just be like abusive to them and, and ultimately really disrespectful and ruin their day when they don't even have to be there. Like they're literally gaining nothing being there in terms of a monetary value. They're just giving their time to help. Oh, it's such a shame. And yes, Karen didn't know, but but that's no excuse, right? You know, you can't just be horrible to an employee. Like in the first story, you can't just be horrible to a customer. You can't just be horrible to an employee. You don't know why they're there or why they're in a certain position. I guess the thing with both these stories is don't presume because, you know, or don't assume because it makes an ass out of you and me. And by you and me, I don't mean you and me. Uh, you watching and me speaking. I mean you and me other people. Yeah, it would, it would never be us. Don't worry um, Anyway, it's a shame isn't it? It's just a shame that people act this way because why not just you know Go in with a little bit, you know a bit more kindness and say like, I'm really sorry I am in a rush, but I, can I get these things because you know my kids sick I've got to go and do this. I've got to do whatever it doesn't really matter at the end of the day Oh, I just feel bad for this woman and yes She has been moved to probably a better position for her because she does not deserve this but like, imagine what this would do to your self-esteem, getting abused when you're volunteering. It's not even like you're getting paid and you hate your job, you're volunteering. Oh, it's sad, but you know, I hope she has a better position now is all I can say. One that she at least enjoys more than, than this rubbish. My face on the building, but somehow I'm not the owner. I love this subreddit. I feel for all of the employees out there and wow, you've got some doozies. You're all fighting the good fights. Now, as for me, I have an IT services business serving corporate clients. But several years ago, I also had a small chain of computer repair stores and took consumer walk-ins. I was a pretty active owner and would work the front counter regularly because I like to interact with customers. And when I can, I like to try and stay close to what the front line is struggling with since they understand the business way better than me in some key regards. I also think pretty highly of myself. So I used to plaster my face on all of my advertising, which resulted in me becoming sort of a walking billboard for my business around town. That's amazing. So I'm working the counter at one of my shops and this fellow I'd never seen before walks in and brings his computer to the counter and tells me that his computer is not working and that I need to fix it. He was a second language learner, so you can't always assume someone is trying to be rude if English is not their first language. Sometimes it just sounds that way, so patience is important, and so is not judging someone. I thank him for coming in and explain to him the diagnostic fees we charged and that the diag fee went towards the repair, you know, all the standard stuff, and he immediately flies into a rage. He tells me that he'd already paid the fee and the computer still wasn't fixed. Oh no, I said, when did you bring it in? He said he couldn't remember, but that it wasn't that long ago. So I looked it up on the computer system and sure enough, there is his customer record complete with a serial number of his system. But it had been a full year since he had that computer in. When I explained this to him, 
and that it had been too long by anyone's standards. Most new consumer computers only have a one-year factory warranty, and this was not a new computer. He flies into another tirade about what a ripoff we are, and how I need to fix this computer because it never worked right after he got it back. I explained it had just been too long, and that sets him off, screaming and threatening me. Now, fortunately, there was a counter between us, so I tell him to get out of my store. I use profanity. Look, it was not my finest hour, but profanity is a strong suit of mine. Well, if you've got it in your locker, just use it, man. But he won't leave and says he isn't leaving until I fix his computer for free. And he says he'll call the police if he has to. So I pick up the phone and dial police for him, explaining to the dispatcher, I have someone in my shop who threatened me and refuses to leave. So the police show up. And by this time, the guy has calmed down a bit and even seems thankful the police had arrived. After a short interview as to my job role and the situation, the responding officer says, sorry, the owner wants you to leave, so you're going to have to leave. This sets the guy off even more and he starts screaming. He's not the owner. I know the owner. The owner would never treat me this way. He's not the owner. So the policeman says, this is the owner. I happen to know he's the owner. The guy continues to argue with the officer, but he remains calm. Okay, how about we talk about this outside? To my surprise, the guy grabs his computer and goes outside with the officer, still ranting on and on about how I had no authority and the officer had no right to throw him out and he wants to speak to the owner. I could still see and hear the two of them outside the retail glass doors as the police officer calmly points to the nine foot tall retail windows on the front of the store with my photo taking up two thirds of the space and my name and title in about nine inch bold letters under my giant ugly face. So the man goes silent, packs his computer into his car, hops in and drives away. I never saw him again. I was really thankful one of my clerks didn't have to deal with that guy. But when I messaged them all this story, they all wish they had been there. Listen, guys, as I said in the intro, if you haven't heard of this subreddit before and you haven't seen one of my other videos on it, then you're missing out, first of all. And second of all, I wasn't lying. It has some of the best stories on the whole of Reddit as shown by that story. To be honest with you, OP, I'm not quite sure about having your face plastered across your buildings and all. But hey, it's your business. It's your company. Do what you got to do. I have to say, I do love the fact that you are so well ingrained in your business to the extent that you don't mind, you know, doing the dirty work, going and working on the counter and you know being part of your staff and really understanding what it's like to work in every sort of role in your business if i ever was like a big business owner i would love to think that i would act like this because it's so it's so good it helps you understand exactly what's going on but yeah i guess it could put you in a situation like this one where you are dealing with a customer who doesn't think that you're the owner because you know why would the owner be working in checkout that sort of stuff so instead you know you see what working with these sort of customers is like these entire ones dealing with them you did it very well i've got to say um and it, it made for a hilarious ending Imagine that guy walking outside, turning around and seeing your big old ugly face on the side of the building. Incredible. And by the way, I don't know what he looks like, but I'm allowed to say he's ugly because OP has called himself ugly. So leave me alone. It's not bullying. And now moving on to our second exceptional story of today's episode. Don't grab the staff. She's a black belt. First things first. I've been hearing these stories on YouTube and the discussion with my wife came up if I'd ever seen anything like this in my time in retail. This story took place in the mid 1990s. So I'm a bit fuzzy on the specific details. And of course, names have been changed to protect the innocent as well as the guilty. Back in my 20s, I worked at a local hardware store that was just down the street from the City University, where I ended up being promoted to store manager. This was my college job. I had a small staff that included several other students, in particular, a young lady cashier, Maria, who aside from being an employee, was also the girlfriend of a friend or classmate of mine, who happened to be the manager of the barbecue restaurant in the same strip mall with us. So I kind of looked out for her. She was the sort of young lady who drew attention from her looks and figure that tended to receive unwanted advances from random customers. This was typically dealt with by a passing comment of, this is not a dating service from me to the cashier. We'd already worked this out. I wasn't getting after her. I was giving her an escape route. In this shop, the cashier's station was basically a booth with two cash registers just at the front door of the store. 
the break rooms in the back room, and you have to walk through the paint department to get to the break room. At her break time, Maria was walking back to the break room to relax and break out her books for class. I was making my rounds through the store, checking inventories, etc., when I heard a polite, excuse me, some muffled words I couldn't hear, a more irritated, excuse me, not the kind like, please let me pass, but more like, what the actual F did you just say to me? Followed by, in quick succession, a scream, loud oof noise, like someone got the wind knocked out of them, a scuffle, thud, and loud crack. Then a lot of unintelligible screaming. Me and my floor salesman ran back to the area where the paint shaker was to find a guy we will call Grabby, one of the maintenance staff from the university, laying on the floor, gripping his arm and yelling how Maria had assaulted him. Call the paramedics, call the cops. Meanwhile, Maria was in shock. Josh repeating, oh my God, I hurt him. Please don't fire me. I asked my salesman to call 911 and tend to the guy on the floor. I took Maria back to the office and had her lay out the story for me, knowing that I couldn't capture audio, but I did have very good video of the paint department as it was a high theft shoplifting area. The store being in a strip mall with a popular barbecue joint right next door happened to have police officers having lunch. So the police response was officers were in the store before the salesman could even hang up the phone. Officer one was sent back to the office to interview me and Maria. He pulled Maria aside and asked her for her side of the story. Grabby, apparently, as she was trying to get by him in the aisle, blocked her way and muttered to her in a threatening way that he was going to intimately assault her after work, which apparently prompted the louder, annoyed, excuse me. He then proceeded to rather forcefully grab her breast. She, though, then grabbed his wrist, spun, and did one of those over-the-shoulder flips and put him on the ground, where she heard something break. And as soon as the guy got his breath back, he started screaming in pain. She then turned so that her back was to me and pulled her top and bra slightly aside to reveal where his grip on her had been. He'd bruised her, leaving clear finger and thumbprints according to what she told me later. Officer One had her sit down and then proceeded to take my side of the story. I explained what the story was as I knew it, what I heard and saw, and showed him the videotape evidence. And sure enough, you could clearly see the guy lean in, her face sort of crinkle in an annoyed expression, the grab and the flip. She was clearly in self-defense. At this point, the paramedics were working on the guy. He had a huge lump on his head where it hit the floor and his arm, the one he grabbed her with, was broken. Apparently, he came down on the tiled concrete floor pretty badly. Officer 2 came in to report to Officer 1, who I guess was the higher ranking. I don't know. But he said Grabby said that she grabbed him out of the blue and just flipped him and broke his arm because he wouldn't get out of the way fast enough. That's the most ridiculous excuse I've ever heard, Grabby boy. Long story short, he ended up escorted to the hospital by police to get his arm set and then arrested for uh, intimate assaults. Can you use the real word here? Uh, I'd rather you didn't, so thank you. Battery, he left bruises, and giving a false police report. Maria was saying she didn't want to press charges. She'd already hurt him. However, this type of assault, the charges are automatic. The fallout for Grabby? Well, he was charged and convicted on all counts through a plea deal. He never went to court as the evidence was pretty overwhelming. He was banned for life from that store fired from his job at the university, placed on an intimate offender registry, ended up divorced as his wife was none too happy about what he did, and last we knew, he was a guest of the state for at least five years. So at least we never had to testify. I might have left out one critical detail here, somewhat intentionally. Maria was a physical education major and was a black belt. Boom, another great story. I mean, he didn't really leave out that key detail because it was in the title, but I get what you're saying, OP. Great story. Maria, absolute legend. I mean, that is why people do self-defense. You know, kung fu, karate, taekwondo, all that stuff. It is technically self-defense and it should only be used for that reason, not aggressively. That's like the whole point of martial arts, isn't it, really? Um, and it's been put into fantastic practice here. That guy, man, why? We're sick of people like you. It's 2021, mate. 
go back to the, I don't know, I want to say 1800s, but no one even liked you then. So just, I'm just done with people like that. What's the point? Really? I mean, can you just not like go on a date with a girl or something like, I don't know, just match them on Tinder or Hinge or, or Bumble. There are loads of apps, mate. Go and use them. Don't assault people at work, please, man. You're better than that, Grabby. You're better than that. But yeah, honestly, good to see his life's been ruined and his wife has divorced him. Good for everyone, really, because you don't really want to be associated with a person like that. And if you are a person like that, you don't deserve to live in the society we all live in and enjoy. So uh, get rid of you. Into prison you go, grabby boy. And there we go, guys. That is it for r slash I don't work here, lady, the movie. Really hope you've enjoyed it. To be fair, if you're still watching right now, after that length of video, you must have done. Shout out to you for watching the whole thing. You're incredible. Now, if enough of you want to see a part two to this movie, well, I'll make one for sure if you want it. So let me know down in the comments below if that's something that you would enjoy obviously give me a bit of time to make that but in the meantime if you haven't seen some of my other movies they're all up on screen right now just click one of them you'll love them all again massive shout out to you for watching this whole episode you're nuts honestly you're nuts but i love you